Hello hard video order stuff, welcome back good buddies. You may remember a couple of videos ago I was quite excited because I'd found some lookup tables called Phantom LUTs that are designed to give your footage an array style colour. Well, after I'd released that video, the creator of Phantom LUTs got in touch saying that he liked the examples that I showed. However, he pointed out that almost all of my clips were shot around two stops overexposed as has become common practice for me and many other Sony shooters who use S-Log because it means very low noise in the shadow areas. He said apparently with his array look LUTs, it's actually often better to not overexpose by two stops and he claims that you can do this and not encounter noise in the shadow areas. Cinematographers that use array cameras tend to expose skin tones at around 50 IRE or percent, which is far darker than I would usually expose S-Log to. They do this to protect highlight detail, but of course they can use a darker exposure because they're usually shooting at a much higher bit rate, like 12 bit raw or higher. So they, they'd have substantially more data to play with which means way more dynamic range and cleaner shadows that retain more detail. Just so I'm doing it right, I am filming all of this with my skin tones exposed at around 50 IRE. This goes against all of my instincts, but here goes. Stay tuned, I'm gonna show you examples of high dynamic range scenes, skin tones, the effect of scenes with lots of color, and lastly, low light. Let's do it. Here's the first example, and this is how I would normally expose an outdoor high dynamic range scene. Looking at the waveform, we can see that absolutely nothing is under 25%. The majority of the information is around 50 and it obviously goes all the way up to 100, but nothing much over that. And here's our second example, which we're exposing slightly lower to protect all of the highlight areas. Looking again at the histogram, we can see that most of the information is between 50 and 25% but there's not a lot under 25% still. The skyline looks like it's sat at around 75% and absolutely nothing is over 100. Back with our first example and I'm just going to lower the exposure a bit and add a lookup table. And there we go, I'm very happy with that look. It's nice and punchy and there's plenty of dynamic range. Now let's switch to the slightly darker exposed version and see how we get on. I'm going to add exactly the same lookup table, but in this case I found I actually didn't need to lower the exposure at all, and I found I actually needed to add an instance of curves, just to make a few small tweaks. Just from looking between the two clips, I'm quite happy with the way they both look, but let's compare them side by side. Looking at them together, we can see that the example on the left, which is the higher exposed version, does have richer, deeper looking shadow areas. Whereas the example on the right, which is the lower exposed version, does have slightly lifted, sort of dull looking shadows. However, I do prefer the highlight areas in the lower exposed version compared to the higher exposed. Now let's have a look at skin tones. This is how I normally expose my videos for my intro and outro sections. Looking at the waveform, you can see that barely anything goes below 25% and my skin tones at times reach 75%, so nice and bright. And then adding my grade, all I did was lower the exposure, add a lookup table, and add a little bit of a vignette. As this is my normal way of shooting and grading, I am particularly fond of this look. However, let's compare it to one which is exposed slightly darker. And here it is, all I've done is I've shot with the same settings, same lighting, I've just closed the aperture of my lens just slightly. Looking now at our waveform, we can see that our skin tones are hovering somewhere around 50%, there's more under 25% and our highlights are not even touching anywhere near 100%. Following the same steps as the last grade, except for lowering the exposure, I got this, which I'm really happy with. Looking at them side by side, I do prefer the contrast that you get with a higher exposure on the left. However, the skin tones on the right hand example are really nice and even, maybe even better looking. Definitely let me know which one you prefer in the comments below. Just put one or two, just so I know. But how do these differences in exposure affect your colour? Well, I took a very boring shot of a colour chart because, well, that's the best way to test this. I've made sure this is lit really well and one is at f4 
and this is how I'd usually expose things, and then the other is two stops lower at f8. When I add a grade, you can see that the most obvious thing is there's slightly more contrast when exposed more brightly, once again. And whilst the colours look good on either side, I think they're definitely slightly more saturated on the, on the brighter exposed version. Of course, this is a really easy fix. I can just add a little bit more saturation. The point to this is there's no difference in colour cast between the two exposures. But what about low light? Well, with Sony, I always think that the best thing to do with low light is to, wherever possible, overexpose. Take this first clip, for example. This is in S-Log2, and I've cranked the ISO up to ISO 25600. This may seem like a lot, but, you know, these Sony cameras can handle those kind of higher ISOs. And once graded, it looks like this, which I think is surprisingly good. It's really quite clean looking, and I'm pretty happy with this. When we expose this clip two stops lower at ISO 6400, it looks like this. And then when we add a grade, it looks like this. And when we look at the two together, you can see that there's significantly less colour on the lower exposure version. There's less contrast and also a lot more noise. So my conclusion here is to definitely expose brightly in low light situations. So my final thoughts, I would say there's certainly merit to exposing slightly lower when using these lookup tables. We know that skin tones and colours are largely unaffected and your highlights will look better. However, I would avoid it for low light videography and with scenes with higher contrast, I do prefer exposing slightly higher to get the maximum dynamic range out of my footage. So there you go, let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. And that's it for now. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I've got a large back catalogue of videos about video on this channel, of which YouTube recommends this one for you, and my latest upload will be just underneath. If you're not already subscribed, definitely do it. Hit the blob just on this side, and until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys. Carries me home Since I'm alone My body's holding me